Hello, this is Jeremy with US Fleet Tracking. Today we'll be going over some basic installation tips over an ATV3. Let's take a look at the device. On an ATV3, you will have six wires in the harness. The three wires will be your basic hookup. Your red is your constant to battery source. Black is chassis ground or framework. And white is ignition source. It is a must that you hook up to an ignition source. This performs a 10 second update when it's in motion. Now you will notice that there are three other wires. The white wire with the blue tracer is not used, so you can kick that out of the way. The green wire is actually an output source. You can use it as horn honk, unlock feature, or starter disable. The blue wire is classified as PTO or panic. That is used as an input. You can hook it to a switch or light bar or anything else that you may have an idea for to hook up in your vehicle. Now that we've gone over the device, Let's look at a couple tools that you may need to perform the installation. Definitely a drill, Phillips bit, 7, 8, or 10 millimeter, preferably depending on the vehicle. Flashlight as well. Crimpers, pliers, strippers will also help perform the functions needed depending on the wires that you're using. Pry tools and pry bars. Pry tools should be preferably plastic. Try not to use any screwdrivers to pry up plastic parts in these vehicles. It will leave marks and you do not want to damage your vehicle. A razor knife to cut away any tape or sheeting to get to the accessible wires that you might need. A screwdriver as well. You just never know what you will have to use that for. When it comes to testing wires, it is always recommended to use a computer safe test light or power probe. Try not to use a bulb test light like the old days because it could pop an airbag or pop a coat on the vehicle and you do not want that. And a power probe will definitely be your best friend as well. Uh, the voltmeter is a little bit different. It just shows you the voltage. The power probe does the same thing. And maybe some rubbing alcohol to clean surfaces and that should be what you need. And now that I've moved my interior panels and identified the three wires, now it's time to place the device in the dash. Now the placement is pretty crucial. The top side is the antenna side, so you always make sure that's facing up or out. Now when you put it inside the vehicle, always try to put it as high in the dash as possible, either behind the instrument cluster or around the top section. You can even place them in the A-pillar right here that runs along the windshield. Now it'll transmit through any fiberglass or plastic, it just will not transmit through anything metal. So we're going to go ahead and put the unit in and make our power connections. If you have questions or you're concerned about where to put the unit and the connections itself in the vehicle, always call tech support or a mechanic that you have, or you can even get a hold of me and I'll try and help you work through it. Let's put the unit inside. If you have any questions about your install, just give the technical support hotline a call. They can walk you through any troubles that may have arisen. Other than that, have a good day.